Hello and welcome to Second Hand Stories. This is a place where I tell you stories because that's what I like to do. What kind of stories will you find here? You will find histories, mysteries and unbelievable stories because those are the things I like. And if you enjoy those too then you're going to have fun. Today's story is a very fascinating story. It's a recent story that was there in the news and uh, I found it incredible because it's a story about how times are changing and with it so are criminals. and it's about all the things that law enforcement has to do to keep up with them the story starts uh, on a forum on the internet this forum is for mobile phones and a person has just posted a query the query is this he says that i bought a phone from the internet okay it's a google pixel when i opened it up it was supposed to be an android phone right but when the phone powers up it says arcane os when the phone finally boots up it has only three things on it it has a settings app it has a clock and a calculator nothing else there isn't even a phone app so i can't even use it to call people which is what you need to call something a phone so he's posted this on the forum and he's asking for help and nobody knows what to make of this nobody's heard of arcane os but that was all about to change very very soon the story of this particular phone it begins in 2008 in 2008 the world was a very different place if you remember like the internet had just appeared on phones and everyone was so excited like you remember when you could like open facebook on a phone and you were like man this is the best shit ever right you could whatsapp people <laughs> you weren't tired of being added to groups fun times innocent times and back then nobody really thought of this one particular feature which was privacy right it wasn't on anyone's radar there was one man though who had thought of this he had this idea that man lived in vancouver and his name was vincent ramos now vincent ramos knew that privacy could be a a huge selling point for phones and that's what he did okay he created uh, a phone called the phantom secure now what was this basically vincent ramos bought blackberries okay and he took out the gps the camera and the microphone and what he did is he put up servers the servers were put up in in hong kong and panama and a phantom secure phone could be connect, like would be connected to these servers and you could only message another phantom phone from a phantom phone so it was a closed network vincent ramos first uh, sold this to rappers and celebrities and 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 sports people and stuff like that because he believed that they would be the people in need of privacy but very soon the phone found its real market because eventually criminals started using it because if there's a section of society that really wants privacy it's those guys so a vast network of crime starts using the phantom secure phone In two thousand and fifteen, the law enforcement finally catches up. They're like, "Oh, wait a second! A lot of criminals have been using this phone to send messages." So they manage to get a phantom phone, and they manage to figure out what's happening. And eventually, they bust the phantom secure network. Right? They take Vincent Ramos into jail, and it's twenty eighteen when this happens. So in twenty eighteen, suddenly there is. a market that's created a market for a new type of phone and law enforcement was very worried that once they take down phantom it's not going to be the end of the story of course somebody else is going to try and invade this space and their fears came true that's exactly what happened in 2018 a new phone enters the market this phone is called anom now anom is an even better phone than the phantom secure now let me tell you some of the features of the phantom secure the phantom secure was an amazing phone that let criminals obviously message discreetly to each other on that closed network it gave you end to end encryption and it also gave you one other feature that feature was that you could remotely wipe the phone right so if you got caught then you could there was a kill switch and if you activated the kill switch it would the app would erase the entire data on the phone which was very helpful if you are into organized crime but law enforcement also understood that this thing was happening so 
they went one step further and invented something called the faraday bag now what was the faraday bag the faraday bag was a bag that was lined with metal and the metal prevented uh, the phone from receiving any signals and with that the phone was secure so the anom phone when it appeared in the market it gave you another option a better option than even the phantom secure what was this option it told you that you didn't need to reach the phone for it to get wiped it basically gave you a thing where if the phone wasn't used for x numbers of x number of hours it would wipe itself it was an even better version of what already existed criminals eventually caught on to it and it really picked up right so suddenly criminals across 100 countries were using this new amazing phone called anom and then something crazy happened on 7th june 2021 suddenly law enforcement across the globe swung into action 800 arrests were made across countries and people were rounded up and criminals couldn't believe how law enforcement had gotten on to them but when they found out even they were impressed because they found out that anom was a phone created by law enforcement <laughs> now this had happened in 2018 in 2018 when they had busted phantom secure different officers from different agencies were having a beer to celebrate and uh, over beers one of them said you know wouldn't it be a great idea if we could just invent something like this and then we'd have like back door access to all the chats wouldn't that be crazy and then someone sobered up and went that's a fucking great idea and they made it so here's how they made it okay so when they rounded up the phantom secure folks there was one guy who was working on the next generation of phantom secure okay he was this tech whiz and law enforcement speaks to him and they go like will you help us out okay we're going to give you money we're going to give you a reduced sentence you have to create a network for us you have to create a phone for us an app okay so here's what he does so he creates they take these phones that already exist on the market like the pixel they wipe it clean this guy puts on the arcane os and in that they put the anom app which is a discrete messaging service here's how you access the anom app you open the phone and you go to the calculator <laughs> and the calculator doesn't open a calculator it opens the anom chat box right you have to enter a security pin and then you get to use the app which is very amusing thing now you've created this phone you've created this app how do you get it to criminals how do you get them to trust you it's very simple you do something that brands do all the time what do brands do today when they want to reach out to people they use influencers <laughs> and that's what these guys did they found criminal influencers right so what they do is they make sure that this phone is marketed as by criminals for criminals okay so when they push it out they push it through distribution channels where you could only get your hands on the phone if you knew a criminal and that's how the chain started eventually they reach out to this one man called hakan aik hakan aik was a person who used to work for the the drug mafia in australia okay he used to smuggle drugs into australia and he was known as the facebook gangster because apart from uh doing his regular drug business which was his day job he also had a very flashy social media profile he would regularly post videos of himself driving his 300000 dollar cars wearing his fancy watches and talking about his gangster shit and i find this fascinating because I I want to see criminal influencers. I think that's a fascinating type of person to be, you know? Just a guy who wakes up and he's like, here are five things you didn't know about your end-to-end -end encrypted phone. <laughs> I find it fascinating. I think it's it's amazing that they have this and it, it makes it makes them relatable in some way, you know? Um just Daud going, my back hurts, my brat. <laughs> so Hakan I gets the phone and he starts talking about it and when he starts talking about it he uh, pushes it out to a lot of people and they believe him because he's an influential criminal 
Okay? He was part of one of Australia's biggest drug mafias. And very soon, word spreads. Anom gets a bigger push when in 2021, um, servers of another encrypted service are taken down. Once more things are taken down, there's a bigger and bigger market and criminals start adopting Anom more and more. Right? And they uh, and and what happens with anom is this okay so while these criminals are chatting right the fbi they've built a backdoor into this app and they can read in real time all the chats that are going on across the world right now this was very interesting because when they were reading the chats uh, they realized things about these criminals right there were lots of interesting things that happened the first was very obviously an ethical dilemma what was the ethical dilemma it was this. The app was fake, but the chats were real. This wasn't fun and games. These were hardened, real criminals making criminal plans for real on your fake app. For example, uh, a lot of times what would happen is people are planning murders and law enforcement has read the chat. Now, it is mor morally, you're obligated to act on it, right? Someone's life is in danger. But if you act on it, then the criminals find out that you have information and this whole thing goes bust. So they had to be very careful in, in, in which crimes they sort of interrupted. And overall, it was about 21 murders that they prevented. Those were the worst case situations. 21 murders were stopped in the most natural way possible. The second thing they realized was that criminals are pretty smart. Even though they trusted the Anom phone, they wouldn't trust it completely. So only one part of the business would be carried out on the Anom phone. Other parts of the business, they used other encrypted services. So if money collection was on a norm, then distribution would be on some other network. So they were planning in advance that what would happen if one network is taken down, which was interesting. The third thing that happened was the law enforcement didn't know who they could trust. So very few people were told that this operation even existed. Why was that? It was because when the Phantom Secure servers were taken down, they found out that a lot of people involved in it were cops. So they realized that there's very few people that you can actually tell about this operation so that it remains a secret and you can gather the most intelligence possible. The operation ran for two and a half to about three years and they collected 27 million chats. And that's when they decided on 7 June that they're going to act. And this day was called the Big Bang. In sync across the globe, law enforcement has gone after criminals at the same time and made 800 arrests. So in total, during this whole operation, 12,000 devices were out in the market. 300 criminal syndicates using them. They were used in 100 countries. 27 million chats were pinged across the servers. $48 million in currency was recovered from this. 50 drug labs were busted and 100 murders were interrupted. And this became one of the biggest sting operations in human history. And that's the story of Operation Trojan Shield. So that's the story. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then uh, please uh, drop a like and uh, drop a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. Uh, also, if there are other stories you'd like me to cover, then uh, leave them in the comments as well. Also, this video is brought to you by My Career. So check the description link because there might be shows that you could attend. Uh, thank you so much. And until later, bye-bye.